I'm Joris and uh, I want to introduce you to my self-built Mercedes Vario camper van. On top you can see a six meter long roof rack. What I really like from my car is that it really fits my hobby well. So we put it the bed really high because under the bed in this way I have a lot of storage. I'm do kite surf and you can see two different types of boards and I can just easily take them out. And you can see, even though I'm traveling right now, I still have a lot of space left over here. So here's my surf gear. Basically here in the corner is all the electricity, like the lithium battery, the transformers, charging equipment, etc. And then we have the high uh, bed placed above the garage. The car is in total 7 meter 30 long. The weight at the moment is around 5,000 kilogram. I put it the water fill up point really high because I have a 220 liter of fresh water inside and the tank is quite high so that makes it more easy to, uh, to fill it up. Sunroof and a good LED light for when it's really dark. So let me show you inside. Welcome on board. Let's start in the front. You can see I made uh, storage all around. Also, I like to use the window space to dry things in case it's sunny, but my things inside are wet. I can put the towels here, my clothes here, etc. Surprisingly, the car is from 2008. Most people think the Varios are really old, um, but actually it's not that old. However, it's clear that this car has never been built, it never been produced for uh, the usage of camper fan. So there is not so much comfort at home. So for example, we don't have air conditioning. So one of the first things I thought like, I need some airco in a manual way. So that's what we got here for the hot sunny days. Another thing is we didn't get the uh, cruise control. So I installed a kind of manual uh, cruise control, which is really comfortable for the long distance. What I really like is this, the original chair. Um, it's very easy to remove it. So basically we have two ways to, uh, to enter the van. We have the sliding door and the front door. Then the first thing normally when you arrive is shoes when you go out or when you arrive. So here we have the drawer uh, for all the shoes. So we don't need to have uh, wet shoes around uh, the car. Funny fact is this is the first drawer ever made by myself. I was really proud when it was just done because I knew by stories that uh, yeah, building drawers is, can be quite complicated. But I succeeded in once and it worked smoothly. Then if you check the other side, we see Brownie. I know she always wants to have her own home. Um, and it's true that she constantly lays there during traveling. So she's very happy with her uh, dog house there. To have optimal usage of the space, um, we have two different tables and they can both move in any way you want. So no matter how you want to sit, you can sit in any way you want. So for example, Sometimes we sit with a lot of people for dinner. Now you can have basically dinner with like five or six people or play poker like that. Um, but if you are uh, traveling as a couple and you both want to work on your laptop, for example, um, you can also use the tables in an individual way. So it makes it able to, uh, to have your own uh, table as well. And I like that you can move it easily back again. So this seat is like one meter 80. So if I extend the drawer, um, a small person could sleep there possibly. This bench is 1 meter 90 by 60, so that's definitely a place uh, where someone possibly could also sleep as well. The upper cabinets, they have all push locks which close automatically, because most push locks you really have to push it to close it, which means you forget it many times and it opens during driving. And this one just closes automatically, so I'm quite happy with it. I also believe our car has above average uh, storage space because also underneath the, the bench and then you need to move away for a while. There is a lot of storage space as well. So uh, for the bigger things you can see it's even empty. So we still have uh, space left over there. Underneath this one we have the Truma Combi Boiler. I'm really happy with that one. Uh, so we have hot water on board for shower, for dishes. And we have the heater for the cold days. Um, honestly, to save some money, I first installed a second-hand one. That was a failure. So at the end, I ended up putting a, a new one underneath the seat. 
and here we have the control panel. That also brings me to the idea to introduce the lights. I chose dimmable lights, so they are all dimmable. We got five of them. You can also charge your smartphone uh, by every light with the USB port. Um, and because you can uh, yeah, move them in any direction you want, uh, you can also create uh, different uh, settings uh, with the lights. Because we have enough space, I decided that I also want to have an indoor shower slash toilet. It was a bit headache to build, to be honest, um, because it's above the wheel. It uh, made it a bit more complicated. But the whole uh, shower cabin is from uh, polyester, so it's 100% uh, uh, waterproof. We got the uh, 12 volt uh, max fan above there, so it's nice LED light plus the ventilation. And actually it's also our sauna room because we also made um, the heater um, in, the, in the shower cabin. And when we turn on the heater, it's really, really, really warm. So it's a wet room, but it's actually more a dry room because whenever I want to dry something, I also put it uh, there. And then for the toilet, I didn't really want to have a chemical toilet on board because it's pain in the ass to, to clean it, to empty it. So I just built it for now my own dry toilet. So we have a 50 liter uh, tank under the car for just pee and I can just empty it uh, wherever I also empty my grey water. And um, for the big job, actually this is the chili drawer. So at the moment I just put a bag in this uh, basket and the back I can just simply throw away. We got a really nice shower door actually, um, because I saw a lot of camper fans and they have like shower curtain, but in so small space, you don't want to have shower curtain because it just sticks to your body. Plus it really stays a long time really wet, right? I found after some research this door, it takes really small space because it rolls up automatically and it closes really solid. I can even lock it. To be honest, I originally was planning to install IKEA kitchen because I didn't believe I could make it myself. After seeing how easily furniture gain in weight, I was a bit uh, afraid to install the IKEA kitchen because I thought that would be far too heavy. So at the end, certain moment, I woke up with kitchen in my mind. I started to draw it. I started to buy the wood. And within two weeks, actually, I had my uh, own builded kitchen. So I'm now really proud of the kitchen. And some of the highlights, it's of course that we have uh, three places to cook and very spacious. And because it's quite big, we have less workspace. But we have a huge sink. Most campus, they have really small sink. And then I'm also wondering always, how can you do the dishes in that, etc. So we bought a very big sink uh, to install there. And for some extra workplace, we can just uh, put this one here and then you can also cut it while you can still use uh, the tap as well. So here we also have cold, cold and hot water. If we still need some more space, I just use this. So actually I used every space I have in the optimal way because here I could not build a drawer because of the gas, but it's a perfect storage for the cutting board. And same applies to here because the sink is here. I could simply cover it with a piece of wood but at the end I thought, no, let's make some space for herbs and soaps and things like that. As you can see, we have a lot of drawers, from small to big. And yeah, it's really amazing to be honest. We have so much space here um, that we can simply uh, store anything uh, we want. So it's not just for kitchen equipment, right? Here's the trash. So when we work, it's easy to throw it away. Then for the cooking, for the ventilation, again, the same as in the bathroom. So we have the uh, Max Fan Dome. It's not just a nice light, but it also has uh, the electric ventilation, which is quite important, in my opinion, in a small space when you cook. And as uh, explained before, we have a lot of upper cabinets with uh, push locks that close automatically. Then for the docks, we also have a little uh, space because I here's the wheel, but next to the wheel, there was some space left. So I decided that's actually a nice place for the dookie bar. And one of the annoying things is you step a lot of times in the water and foot plate of docks when you don't have a fixed place for it. And now it's just simply slide out and slide in. And uh, even other docks are uh, using it. So it seems to be a popular dookie bar. Here's another drawer, big one for food and a lot of storage as well. 
which goes actually above the, the wheel. Then we have the 130 liter compressor fridge. I'm really, really, really impressed of this kind of fridge because you can put more things than you expect in it. Um, and it's cooling really well. So we had days like 35 degrees outside and still you literally have ice cubes in the freezer by solar panel. Talking about solar panels, uh, yeah. how much uh, solar panels and batteries do you have? Yeah, so I chose this time to go for lithium battery uh, because you can uh, decharge it like up, up until like 20% and you still have like 12, 13 voltage. So here is the battery monitor. We have uh, two solar panels, which is around 450 uh, watt. And in my experience, that's far enough. And even though the space is limited, there is still a possibility to, uh, to reach the garage from inside the car. So it's just like anything you don't use often, move it in the garage. You would be surprised, but I can even move from here to there in the garage. Which is actually a nice thing, because sometimes when it is raining hard and there is, for example, an issue with the electricity, I can check it via here. So I decided to move the bed really high for all the surf equipment and uh, other storage. We have gas, as you can see, because we cook by gas, but I don't want to carry gas bottles and have that hassle. So I installed LPG tank under the car outside, and it's very comfortable because just at the fuel station you can, uh, you can fill it up. And then we got the bed itself. I'm happy that I'm a hobbit, so I don't need a really big bed. So this bed is like 1 meter 80 by 1 meter 40. I could possibly extend it until like 1 meter 85, uh, but for me this is uh, more than enough. And some more storage space for clothes above the bed. We have a small window. How long did it take and how much did it cost to build it? Oh, the golden question. Here it's like half a year at least full time. I have like ADHD, so it's all or nothing. So it was hyper focused. So I kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. To be honest, during the build, I had some tears in my eyes as well because I was planning to build a camper, but I ended up first working three months on the body of the car and the rust maintenance. And uh, yeah, that made me really cry because I thought like, why did I buy this car? It's so ugly. And on Instagram, you only see nice cars, etc. And I didn't believe my car would ever become uh, nice like that but it did and also I have to be honest I was not handyman before I was really too left-handed I called myself always Mr. Duct Tape I was already afraid to put a screw somewhere and I fixed literally everything with duct tape but I really wanted to develop myself and yeah the best way is by doing and now I'm so you know proud and it's such a big reward driving the car now especially when people uh, ask a lot about the car and give compliments. So the build in total was like uh, three months body work and uh, three months uh, interior, but with hyper focus. <laughs> the car, I bought it for 12,000 euro in Germany. So I had to import it from uh, Germany. Then with some paperwork, etc., the car in total probably cost me like 13, some taxes, 14,000 euro. And I have installed, have spent another 20, 25K in total, uh, including the paint job, the bodywork, and all the interior, electricity, gas, all the infrastructures. So in total, it's nearly 40,000 euro, uh, the car. But I think if I would sell it now, uh, the value is much more on the market because these kind of cars are quite popular. But I didn't buy, buy and bought it and build it to sell it, right? It's just my home. But total cost around 40k uh, in total. And you have in Instagram accounts where you document everything about the van, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I just wanted to have a diary for my own, um, but also to uh, yeah to 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 show the the procedure of building a car like this. So I posted about every step, about every day I worked on the car. I made a post. So you can check uh, Mercedes Vario Adventure on Instagram. And there you can see every single step um, being posted uh, by me about the build so far. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the tour. Thank you very much as well. Ciao. I hope you enjoyed the tour today. It's a bit windy outside. I hope sound is still good. And if you like it, leave thumbs up and see you the next one. Cheers.